All right, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the stiffness matrix. Uh, we simplified it a little bit, and we drew a, a diagram that showed us what the degree of freedoms are um, for this structure. Now, in this video, we're actually going to look at each one of the four elements, and we're going to come up with a stiffness matrix um, using this template that we um, came up with in the last video. And those stiffness matrices uh, we're going to need later on um, to find the vertical, uh, find the actually find all the reactions here on this indeterminate structure. Okay, so let's start with element one, and and please notice how I label the rows and columns when I start doing these matrices. They're very very important. You do not want to get the numbering wrong. Now, if we did K, oh, I'm in my line tool, K matrix for element one, that's the subscript one, uh, we're going to have this matrix here. And notice that this matrix is going to have 16 values, right? Because each element has four degrees of freedom. So there's going to be uh, four rows and four columns, right? Four times four is 16. And each one of the four stiffness matrices we're going to do is going to be based off this K sub I template. Okay. Now I'm going to label. Okay. I'm going to start with the columns first. Um, you can start with the row. It doesn't matter. They're both going to be the same. So let's start with the top. This is how I'm going to label uh, my stiffness matrix for element one. So I'm going to look at element one and I'm going to go left to right, starting with the um, rotational degrees of freedom, then the vertical, then the horizontal. And really there's no horizontal, so we can just forget about that, right? So we have rotational and vertical from left to right. So left to right, starting with the rotational degrees of freedom, we have theta 4, so I'm going to put a 4 here. Then we have theta 1, and that's in green, so I'm going to put that in green, theta 1. Uh, then I'm going to go back to, uh, so we're done with rotational ones, right, for element 1. We're going to have vertical next. It's going to be 6, 7. So 6, 7. And for the rows, it's going to be the same thing, right? We're going to go 4, 1, 6, 7. I'm going to put a 1 here at the space. And for each, well, yeah, I guess. Okay, so for each one of these 16 values, we're going to, look back at this template matrix and basically for element one the only variable in this entire matrix is L meaning the length of element one now if we were given E and I we would keep E and I in this matrix and plug in the values for E and I and then continue on with the problem in this case EI is constant so we can pull it out and all we're doing now is plugging in L into each of these 16 um, fractions and figuring out what the stiffness matrix is um, for element one. So if we look back at the diagram, notice that element one is 24 feet long. Okay, so down here, and remember we read matri uh, spots or I guess boxes or spaces in the matrix. Um, we do row first then column next. So for this first spot here, um, the spot is 4, 4. So we look, well, I guess that's not too important right now. Uh, let's just fill in the values. Um, so for element 1, we have a length of 24 feet. So we're going to put in 24 feet um, into this L here, and we're going to get 4 over 24, which is 2 over 12, which is 1 over 6, right? 1 over 6. Now, for this next space, um, again, our length is 24, so it's going to be 2 over 24 or 1 over 12. Uh, for the next one, we have 6 over L squared. Um, so 6 over 24 squared, I'm sorry, yeah, 6 over 24 squared um, is going to give us 1 over 96. And I'm doing these in fractions, um, one, because we keep an exact value. And then second, it's actually much, much faster to write, um, you know, a fraction 
rather than um, this value in decimal form then you have to deal with you know zero point whatever the decimal value is for this um, value um, and you gotta worry about significant figures and how many decimal places you want to take this value out to be so it's much much easier if you do everything in fractions at least for basic stiffness method problems right so finally we have this last spot here which is 4 7 and here it's negative 6 over L squared so it's gonna be negative 1 over 96 okay now we move on to the second row uh, we have 1 4 uh, which is 2 over L which is 2 over 24 which is 1 over 12 and then we have 1 over 6 right 4 over L then we have 6 over L squared or 6 over 24 squared um, which is also 1 over 96 then finally we have 1 over 96 and remember that's a negative now we move on to the third row we have 6 over L squared uh, which is 1 over 96 uh, then we have 6 over L squared again which is also 1 over 96 then we have 12 over L cubed so it's going to be 12 over uh, 24 cubed which is going to be 1 over 1152 okay and then we have negative 12 over L cubed which is negative 1 over 1152 and then finally down here we have negative 6 over L squared which is negative 1 over 96 and then we also have a negative 1 over 96 here we have a negative 1 over 1152 here and we have a positive 1 over 1152 here and notice again that along the main diagonal there are no zeros and there are no negative signs so that means uh, we're pretty good and a, you can do a check here by uh, making sure this um, matrix is symmetrical about the main diagonal here okay you have 1 12th over here, you have 1 12th over here, you have 1 96th over here, you have 1 96th over here, you have negative 1 over uh, 1 5 1 1 5 2, you have negative 1 over 1 1 1 5 2 here. Okay, so that's the stiffness matrix for element 1. Now we have to do three more for the rest of the um, rest of the, the beam. Now if you kind of understand the concept, you can probably skip past these parts or move on to the next video. I think in this video all, we're just going to figure out what the stiffness matrices is for elements 2, 3, and 4. So, looking at element 2, we have k sub 2 is equal to, and the matrix is here, right? And we, the way we label the rows and columns is we we take a look at this diagram and for element 2 we do left to right starting with rotational then vertical uh, we have a 1 2 7 8 so we're gonna label down here we're gonna label 1 2 7 8 1 2 7 and 8 okay and notice again how I wrote these uh, row and column. We we start left to right. We do rotations first, then verticals, then finally horizontals. Okay. So looking at element two, um, notice that element two is 18 feet in length. So our L is going to be 18. So if we start here at uh, one one, we're going to have uh, one, 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 one. We're going to have 4 over L, which is 4 over 18, right? Uh, that's going to give us 2 over 9, right? We simplify that. For 1, 2, we're going to get 2 over L, uh, and that's going to give us 2 over 18, which is 1 over 9. For the third spot, we're going to get 6 over L squared, which is 6 over 18 squared. Um, and that is going to be 1 over 54. And then for this last spot, we get negative 6 over L squared, where L is 18. Uh, we're going to get negative 1 over 54. Okay. Uh, for the second row, uh, we're going to plug in values 1 over 9, uh, 2 over 9. I think you get the point, right? You just plug in the length for that respective element, and you'll get these values using this template up here. 
negative 1 over 54. Uh, for the next row is 1 over 54, uh, 1 over 54, 1 over 486, uh, negative 1 over 486, uh, negative 1 over 54, negative 1 over 54, negative 1 over 486, and then 1 over 486. And again, uh, the main diagonal, there's no zeros, there are no negatives, and this matrix is symmetrical. Now, if we move on to element 3, k sub 3, oops, <laughs> k sub 3, uh, notice something. If we go up and look at element 3, notice that element 3 is the same exact thing as element 2. And notice that this entire structure is symmetrical about a vertical line here at joint C. Loading's the same, the boundary conditions are the same, um, I'm sorry, symmetrical, the lengths are symmetrical, uh, the loading symmetrical, everything's symmetrical. So if element 2 has the same length as element 3 and EI is constant, we can safely assume that K sub 3, um, the values for K sub 3 are going to be the same for values of K sub 2, right? The only thing that's going to change are the degrees of freedom. So let me do this first. Let me copy. Can I copy this? Uh, we'll copy, paste, okay. So I'm going to put these values here along this matrix. I'm going to say exit there. Um, and then I'm going to erase. Oh, that's a big eraser. Let's make that a little smaller. Erase this. Right. And then draw the rest of the matrix here that was cut off. The only thing I'm going to... Uh, do differently here for k sub 3 is labeled the degrees of freedom. So if we look at element 3, we do left to right, we do rotations first, then verticals. So we have 2, 3, 8, 9. So I'm going to label the rows and columns 2, 3, 2, 3, and then we have 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Now so that's, that's the stiffness matrix for element uh, 3. Now for element 4, another cool thing happens. Element 4, notice that it's symmetrical to element 1. And the length is the same. So that means the stiffness matrix for element 1 is the same as the stiffness matrix for element 4. So again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw my magic box. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to paste it. And I'll move it here. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm going to redraw this. Now, our labeling, um, same thing. We look at element 4. We do uh, left to right, rotations first, then verticals next. So we have a 3, uh, I won't circle it, 3, 5, 9, and 10. Uh, so it would be... 3, 5, 9, and 10, and then 3, 5, 9, and 10. Okay, so in this video, uh, we, we figure out the four stiffness matrices um, for, LM, for the entire beam. Um, in the next video, we're actually going to uh, learn how we can... Um, derive or put together the S sub complete matrix which stands for our structural stiffness matrix. Alright, so see you in the next video.